With college hockey season coming up, there's no better person to talk to than the head coach of the national champions from last season. I'm Evan Marinovsky here for NCAA Digital with head coach of the UMass Minutemen, Greg Carvel. Greg, how you doing? I'm good, Evan. Good to catch up with you. We've got a long history together. It's good that we're keeping it going. Yes, they couldn't end when I graduated. It had to, it has to continue. But so obviously you guys won the national championship. What comes with that is a lot of appearances over the summer. First pitches and speeches and going on talk shows, talking to me right now. What have been some of your favorite things that you've gotten to do uh, over this past summer? Uh, the highlight would probably be, we actually did two first pitches with the Red Sox. Uh, we went in, uh, I think it was end of May, early June, and our players had all gone home so it was just the staff and I was able to let my nine-year-old son throw out the first pitch I had done it two years ago and it was nerve-wracking and um, I knew my little guy would do a better job than I would the fans would probably enjoy it more so that was fun uh, I, I went out west I did a speaking engagement in Sun Valley Idaho uh, because of winning the championship I was asked to come speak about that uh, the journey to to winning the championship um Spin chiclets was a fun, uh, fun experience as well. So, a whole bunch of things that that I really enjoyed. Went to the Bruins game and then were recognized by the Bruins. And there's a whole list of other things that I'm not remembering right now, but those are a few of the highlights. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, and and it's funny, you know, after you guys won the championship, obviously the question was asked, you know, does it feel like you thought it felt to be a national champion? And it's tough because it's right after you're in the midst of it. It's hard to kind of process. Now that it's been months removed, did winning a national championship feel the way you thought it would? You know, we won the game 5 nothing, And so, you know, unlike the semifinal, if you win in overtime, you have this, you know, outpouring of emotion. And when you win handily, it's, it's a little different feeling. Uh, the way I've answered that question, though, is uh, it's not so much that I don't focus on the fact that we won the national championship. I, fact, I focus more on the point that we were able to build a culture and a program capable of doing that because when we got here five years ago, UMass was a long way from even dreaming of, of winning championships. So when you ask how's it feel to win a championship, I don't feel about, I don't think about that game. I think about what we've done to build basically our culture, which I, I think is a big reason why we win. And um, that's what I'm really proud of. It's not the fact that we, that we won that particular game or, how we, uh, you know, the wins that season, it's the, it's the accumulation of how hard we worked to put, to build a certain type of program. You mentioned the journey to get to that point. And I'll never forget when we were talking to you in the fall of 2019, the season after um, going to the national title game with Kale and Mario and, and the whole crew, you know, you mentioned how the team can't be complacent, no complacency. That was the word you always used complacency. You have to avoid it. Now for this season, you've won the national championship. How do you avoid the complacency heading into this season? Well, it starts with me. I think uh, I think things trickle down from the coach through the team. And so if they see me acting complacent, then they're going to be complacent. So I've put a, a lot of uh, responsibility on me to lead the players and so that they see me how I'm continuing to push forward and, and not happy and, and it's not that we're not happy, but I, I feel like winning the championship was great, but it wasn't the end goal. It was just the next step. And so now the next step is to try to repeat. And um, so, yeah, complacency is a major concern. Uh, I've spent most of my summer being uncomfortable, really uncomfortable about the fact and uh, not wanting the team just to stall in any way. And the fact that we have 10 new players with 26 guys and 10 of them are new. So that's a big percentage of your team that you have to incorporate weren't part of last year's team. So it's a big challenge just to, to onboard that many guys and to, so that they understand standard of play here, standard of how we do everything on and off the ice. So it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and it is every year. Usually you have six, seven, eight new guys. And this year we have 10. So uh, a lot of, a lot of new life in the room, a lot of new, uh, you know, new personalities and we, we got to, work hard to come together and to find that chemistry. Cause I think ultimately that's, you know, so you need a strong culture, but you need a team that really comes together. I thought our kids did that outstandingly last year. You mentioned the new faces. 
every year the recruiting class for you guys gets better and better. Last year, obviously, Josh Lapina was sort of the standout. He went right into the top six, and he's someone, obviously, I think most people expect to have an even better sophomore year. Of this freshman crew, who do you expect to make that jump into a top six role or a top four role on defense? Who are guys we should watch out for? Uh, there's, there's a couple of guys. Lucas Mercury, is, uh, he was a six-round draft at Carolina. He, he's looked good early on. He could be a top six player early early in his career. Scotty Morrill will win the second round this year to Carolina as well. He uh, He's looked real, real good on the ice. Uh, and Ryan Uftel is another kid who was, I think he was a fourth round to Nashville. So those three kids come in as freshmen, uh, already drafted. We haven't had a lot of kids like that. Most of our drafted players have been drafted after their freshman year from Kessel, Leonard, Lindbergh, Lapina. Um, we've got a, a you know pretty impressive list of kids who, who went through a couple of NHL drafts, but then came to UMass and, and showed, uh, developed to the point where they became NHL draft picks. But we've got three kids in this freshman class that are that are draft picks that I think can be impact players right away. So two spots that I think, you know, will be up for grabs for sure is two in the top four of your D Zach Jones and Mark Delgaizo are gone. You know, you mentioned last year, Mark Delgaizo being maybe your best player, someone who could do it all on D and Zach Jones being this elite puck moving power play type defenseman. Those are big shoes to fill. How do you replace the production and the, in the efforts of those guys? Yep. No, they're very big shoes to fill. But so were Kale McCarr and, and uh, Mario Ferraro. As Jake McLaughlin, you know, it's just you, you get the next group of kids and, and you push them and develop them. Um, but we've got three three good players coming in the back end. Slava Demon is a transfer from Denver who uh, will we'll have one year with him. And he's a, he's a veteran guy. He's played at a very good program and uh, is a very good player. So him and then we talked about Scotty Morrow and Ryan Uffgold. So those are three pretty high-level defensemen. Uh, I think we're going to have, again, a very, very strong back end. We've got eight rostered defensemen. All eight kids can play, and it's going to be competitions. It's going to be – it's the first time where I feel like um, it's going to be really tough to decide which six kids play get to play from night to night. Always a tough decision, especially with the better recruiting classes coming into UMass every single year. Another th- transfer is Cam Donaldson. And I remember last year uh, going into the season in your preseason media availability, nobody asked about Carson Jasevich, and Carson went on to be a huge goal scoring for you, good goal scorer for you guys. I remember the S- your SID, Jill Jakuba, saying, uh, how did no one ask about Carson Jasevich? And I was like, well, who is he? So I'll ask, Cam Donaldson, what can we expect? Is he a guy who you, you know, I know he's a smaller player, but is he someone that you're looking for to sort of fill in some of that um, offensive upside that Carson brought? Yeah, he's almost uh, the complete opposite of Carson. Carson is six foot three, big personality, big presence. Cam is a is a smaller guy like me, high skill, high IQ, really shifty. He, he's going to score points. Uh, he was a very good player at Cornell, and. Uh, He's still he's going through an adjustment. Every kid who comes into our program, there's an adjustment period, and and Cam's going through that. But I'm starting to see him come through the other side and starting to get comfortable and being the player that he's capable of being. So uh, I, I expect him to be an important part of our offense. He's a fun player to watch, very shifty, great IQ, great vision, uh, a real good kid. So um, as good as our team was last year, I think we're as deep on the back end I think we might be a little bit deeper up front this year. And uh, we got Matt Murray back. So we, we should be set in the net as well. Yeah. So in net, obviously, Philip Lindbergh's gone. Matt Murray stayed and he's, I assume, going to be kind of the guy. Hey, where is he at? I know you don't love talking about goaltenders, but what do you see out of him thus far in the in the ice time you guys have had? Where do you think his head's at? Kind of probably being the main guy this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy for him. This is his fifth year that we'll be together. And I've seen him continually develop over those five years. Jared DeMichael does an outstanding job with our goalies. And, you know, it's been tough for Matt and Philly Lindbergh for three years. They, they had to battle for the net. And uh, I'm, ex- I'm happy for Matt that, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a big gap right now between him and, and our other goalies, which that's never been the case for him. So he's going to carry the weight. You know, I hope he plays every game. 
I hope he uh, has uh, numbers like we saw last year, and I hope the team plays really well in front of him, and and he has an outstanding year and, and signs a contract at the end of the year, like like Lemberg did last year. And another thing, you know, obviously every team is excited to have fans back in their buildings, but I think for you guys this year it's going to be a little more special, given that the Mullen Center is the size it is. And you're going to be raising a banner uh, on that opening night with you know fans going crazy, probably. Is this something you're thinking about? I mean, what do you think it's going to be like when you step out there onto the bench for the first time with the fans and the banner raising? I mean, have you thought kind of what that might be like for you guys? Yeah, a little bit. Went to uh, we had a football game here on campus this weekend. Uh, UMass played Boston College, and it was great just to be in an environment with you know pulsating energy. And it'll be a real special night. On October 2nd, we, we raised the national championship banner again. We're playing an excellent, excellent hockey team in Minnesota State. who was right there in the final four with us last year. And it's been a strong, strong team for, for many years. So it's going to be quite a night where we're going to make history by raising the banner. And then we're going to have to follow that up with a ready to play a really good hockey team. And I would hope that the building will be full. I hope, uh, you know, COVID issues are are not peaking. So there's no issues. Uh, as far as I know, uh, everyone's allowed in just need to have a mask. Um, and it should be quite a night nice mall center and come with a full voice. Fans should come with a full voice, Greg. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, and for, for fans, for college hockey fans around the country, make sure to keep it here with NCAA.com for the entire season.